so here you have just a simple volume control um, so if I play a C again you can see down here in your track that this is not very loud so I can make it louder with this volume knob I can bring it up so it goes all the way to plus 12 um, that's great you know you can control it here or you can control it on your fader here um, but this will just help you just get a good level for it now this sine level um, that I'm assuming is a sub oscillator since there's two oscillators over here oftentimes there's a third oscillator on synths and it's just a sub so it'll play either one or two octaves below the note you're playing so let's try that now and see what happens so it brings in a sine wave an octave below the note that you're playing so that's pretty cool it's nice to have some sub so you can get your sub from oscillator 2 or you can get it from this here but so you could easily get tones layered across three octaves or more which will give you a really fat sound so um, it has a little effects section right here and you have two options you have flanger or chorus let's just see what those sound like Again, pretty nice effect. Let's see the chorus. That's dry. All the way. Sounds pretty usable. All right, that's the effects. Let's go down to this glide section. Glide is basically a little ramp. Um, on your pitch. So let's turn it on. Um, glide is also called portamento, so if you ever see that, it means the same thing. It's just the Italian word for it. Um, so as I pull this time knob up, and that's the milliseconds for the glide, you'll start to hear it take effect. So you can also think of glide as like a pitch envelope. So it's the, an envelope is affecting the pitch at the onset of the note. So it's kind of like a beer or a beer. It's kind of like a ramped sound into the note. So um, let's see. It's kind of a silly sound, but you know, maybe there's a use for it somewhere. Also, uh, this sync knob in the LFO and vibrato section is will sync to the uh, BPM of your project. So, right now in the vibrato, when it says half, that means half a measure, it's like a half note. Um, and this is a quarter note. It does dotted and triplets, so any subdivision on the actual BPM in your project, it'll do that for you. Okay, so let's talk about the filter envelope. Actually, let's talk about the envelope depth on the filter itself. So let's play a note again. Watch as I adjust the envelope. So
So what this is adjusting is the depth or the amount of the effect that this envelope is going to have on the cutoff. So the further I put this up and it kind of goes a zero to one value, if I put this all the way to one versus at 0.5, so you can see that it's not really pushing the filter open quite as much. It's not putting as much depth from the envelope. Now if I go over here, we're going to have no effect because it's working in polarity. So the left side is negative and the right side is positive. So it's only affecting the cutoff in the positive values. Okay. So let's talk about the filter envelope. So an envelope affects the duration of an event. So since it's the filter envelope, it's going to affect the duration of how the filter opens, like the length of time from when I press a key to when it opens and to when it releases and how long it sustains. Most envelopes have four features. They have attack, decay, sustain, and release. Attack is so this has to do when you press a note down so when i press a note down on my keyboard if the attack is all the way down it's going to sound immediately if i move it forward it's going to take this amount of time in milliseconds to open the filter since this is the filter envelope let's try it so let's put the cutoff down Okay, hear that? Now if I move it back, it's fast. Now it's slow, so you can create a ramp. Pretty cool. So the decay is the amount of time it takes to reach the sustain point. So I know that's weird, but if you put the sustain all the way up, the sustain is basically the volume of the note. So by putting it all the way up, and let's put the attack down just for a sec. Watch as I bring the sustain down. See how it actually brings the volume down? But if you wanted, kind of like a plucky picky sound, maybe you want to sustain down but if you want when but also when i hold the key down it kind of disappears maybe you want that but maybe you want it to sustain so if you're playing like a lead or a bass or anything where you want sustain in the note, you've got to bring your sustain up. Okay, cool. So the release is going to be when I take my finger off the key, how long does that effect remain? So if it's all the way back, it's off immediately when I let my finger off. If I extend it, to hear this, we'd need some release on the amplitude envelope as well. So let's put it out. There we go. The amplitude envelope works exactly the same way as the filter envelope. It's just affecting the amplitude of the note. And amplitude is just a fancy word for volume. Um, so you have your same exact controls, attack, decay, sustain, release, and they're going to work in exactly the same way, except they're affecting the amplitude of the note, and it's not affecting the filter. So that was a little overview of the analog section of the RetroSynth in Logic Pro 10. Um, I hope you guys learned something. Um, I hope it inspires you to play around with it, try to make some sounds with it. Um, once you understand the basic components of synthesis, it gets really fun because 
you can build pretty much any sound you can think of in your head. Um, so again, if you have any specific questions or there's anything that you specifically want me to go over, um, totally let me know in the comments, anything like that. I'm happy to uh, answer any questions you might have. Um, so stay tuned and we'll go over the other models in here, the sync and the wavetable and the FM. Um, really cool that this comes free with Logic. Um, it sounds awesome and I use it a lot in the work that I do. So again, hope you guys like it and have a great day.